I, uh, I'd like to take you back to that afternoon when, uh, when I parked my car, they had saved a place for me here with my name on it. Uh, I walked up these steps, official of the federal government, uh, the administration of Jack Kennedy, uh, to meet uh, with the governor of Alabama in this historic capital. I remember coming up that stairway. I don't believe that the American flag was up there. The Confederate battle flag was up there. A trooper met me at the door, took me into the governor, and as you imagine, it was a hostile meeting. Um, it, um, he had his cabinet, most of them, around this table, and I sat down, and he had supported John Kennedy in 1960. Kennedy had carried five southern states, this one included. Uh, and he pounded the table and told me how frustrated and disappointed and angry he was at the president for inflicting the Freedom Riders on Alabama. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but um, there came a moment after what was really an extended lecture uh, in which I said, you, might, you know, uh, let's make this Mississippi's problem. And uh, I said, he said, we can't. They don't want to be protected. They're looking for trouble. The rebel else are going to get it. And I then said, Governor, if you can't protect them, then marshals or troops will have to. And then he said, if federal troops or federal marshals set foot on soil in Alabama, blood will run the streets. It was the first opening I had. And I said, Governor, that happened last Sunday in Aniston. Blood ran in the streets. We can't have it again. Please. We hammered out a statement to release the press. Then there was a strange moment. I said, I need to call the Attorney General and tell him. And he said, fine, use my telephone. And we got up from this conference table, and I walked over, and I sat in the seat of the governor of Alabama to call the Attorney General of the United States and read him the statement. Governor Patterson leaned down on the table. At this point, was friendly, um, almost congenial. But each could hear the other speaking. And I read the statement to Bob, and the Attorney General said, does he, believe, does he mean it? He said, tell Bobby, yes, I mean it. And I said, Governor, would you like to talk to him? He said, no, I can hear him, you, can, you talk to him. It was during that conversation after the Attorney General was, was give, gave his own approval to the statement that the Attorney General said, I've just talked to the President of Greyhound. Would John mind calling him? And the Governor said, I'd be glad to call him. Do you have the number? And, and the Attorney General said, he's there right now. And at that point, I got up and stood at the other side of the desk. And the governor sat down and called President Greyhound to reassure him that never again under his administration would any property of Greyhound be damaged as it was uh, that afternoon. And, um, and the governor made that call, apologized to the President of Greyhound, and after a brief period, shook hands all around and and I walked out and came down to my car and went back to Birmingham. And of course, the next afternoon, or the afternoon after that, we were back here and the tragic events un unfolded. Um, I've been back once since then to do a documentary, went back in the office, and it's not much dissimilar from, it was, uh, from the way it was set out in that day. I'm sure if John Patterson were here, his version of our conversation might be different. Uh, although I recently was asked to comment on a documentary that's being done on him, and the documentarian said my version of it came very close to his own. I mean, I, I think all of us could look back on that time and blame the governor, blame Commissioner Sullivan, blame the Birmingham and Montgomery police for all the abuses um, I'm so glad we all survived and that we all lived uh, to come to this place. And it just reminds us that, in the words of the anthem, we shall overcome someday. Thank you all very much. <laughs>